Welcome back to our RBD Block Challenge. It's a new month, I've got a new haircut, and we have a new block to work on. It is the Tulip Block, and it's designed by Jill Finley. Now look at this block. It is a little more of a challenge. So there's a lot of piecing in this, but we're gonna break it down for you step by step, and we'll work on this block together. So the first thing you need to do is download the Tulip Pattern on our RBD website. And it has all the materials listed, the cutting instructions and tools needed. I have all my squares, rectangles, all my pieces labeled, and we're ready to begin sewing. So the first thing the pattern tells you to do is grab your A and M block. So here's our A block, and we're gonna get our M blocks, which are these teeny little blocks. Now we're gonna take these little M blocks, and we're gonna trace them corner to corner, and that's gonna be our sew line. And we're gonna make this, it's kinda like a little house block, um, it's like a tall flying geese, I guess you could call it. I've already marked my other blocks. And we're going to just put, you should have eight squares of the small and four of the larger. So I'm gonna actually take them over to my pressing station. I'm gonna press these squares on the corner. So like we have done before, you can make this temporary heat adhesive instead of pinning. And I just like to do this method because it just speeds things along. So make sure your, your square is going the right direction and this is gonna be your sew line. Just gonna give them all a quick press. And I'm gonna chain piece them all at one time. Let's just clip our threads. I'll double check. That's the direction it's supposed to go and we can trim each of these sides off. We're gonna trim down, line our fourth inch there and just leave fourth inch of fabric there. Flip up, do those all together one at a time. So I'm going to take these over. Now let's bring it over here. I'm going to press these open. Just like that. Oh, let's get that. And now on the opposite side, put that white piece on the corner.
We'll just repeat, clip our threads. A quick check, just what we want. Okay, cut four inch, a fourth an inch from your seam. Okay, let's press them open. Okay, we've got these little mini, they kind of look like little houses. Throw these scraps away. Um, we are going to make our flying geese now. So we're gonna grab our K, and I was hoping not to have to use my glasses, but sometimes these, I'm showing my age because some of these letters are so small. Okay, B and K, here we go. So we got our B and K block, or squares. We got our B and K squares. And again, you're gonna mark this corner to corner. Oh, I've already previously marked the others. It's gonna be our sew line. Let's take this over to our pressing station and press these on. Okay, we're just repeating what we did before. Clipping threads. Taking a quick look and we're gonna trim. Fourth inch from your seam. We're gonna flip open and press. Okay, now let's put our block on the opposite side. Give it a good press. Right, We're flipping those open. Just do a quick finger press here. And you should have a fourth inch seam allowance. Well, a fourth inch from the top is where your point should be. So your point doesn't get eaten up in your seam. And those blocks are ready to go. And then you're gonna put them on the bottom of your, your little house unit. So let's sew those together. And sometimes you 
you want you can trim up your flying geese but these are looking really good to me so I am not I don't feel like I need to trim them up when I am sewing with my flying geese I just make sure that I'm sewing on this side so when I have everything lined up like that that when I'm sewing I can see that I'm not taking off the tip of my flying geese all right let's clip our threads open them up and they all look great let's just give them a quick press okay all these units are finished let's go to our next couple units we need our C and J blocks And I have already marked these corner to corner, these small cloud fabrics. And what you're going to do is mirror images of these units. So one direction, the J block is gonna go that way. And the other one, it's gonna go that way. And make sure you get this correct or else you'll be sewing them again. So again, mirror images of each other. There, that's right. Let me give them a quick press. And just double check that you have mirror images of each other. That is right. Now let's just trim from the seam down to a fourth an inch. Okay, I'm just gonna lay them on my pressing station for now because I'm gonna work on the next unit, which is I and D blocks. It's very similar to what we just did. We've marked these corner to corner and I previously did it. It's a little dark, but you can still see it. Again, that's your sew line, not, not a guide. So just be careful to do mirror images of each of these. Okay, make sure they're opposite. Yep, just what we want to see. Let's trim them down. Okay, now let's take it back to the, our pressing station and we're gonna flip and press. Bring them back over here. And we have got, I'm gonna lay those out, all these units out, and let's go to the next step. Then, now the next step, we are gonna make this pinwheel 
right in the center. And we need two E blocks and two H blocks. Now this time, I've already marked this, again, just drawn corner to corner, but this time it is our guide. It is not our stitch line. And we are just sewing a fourth inch on each side of our guide. All right, clip, clip, clip. Clean this station off. And now it is our cutting line. And we have made two half square triangles at one time. So I'm going to take it to our pressing station and press to the dark side. All right, these are pressed to the dark side. We are supposed to square them up to two and a half inches. Now again, I don't open my seams. Makes your quilt blocks weaker when you open your seams. It is a little bulky when you're, um, when you're squaring them up, but that's okay. You just press down harder. When you open up your seams, you are, um, you make the quilt block weaker because you rely on the strength of the threads and not the fabric when they're flipped to one side. This is a personal preference. A lot of people open up their seams, but I'm told by my long arm quilter, it is so much better to keep your seams flipped to one side. She never recommends opening up your seams. Okay, these are all squared up. Now we're gonna assemble our pinwheel. Just take a look, make sure you're going the right direction with your fabrics. because you can certainly flip your half square triangles the wrong way. Oh, that goes there. And our last pinwheel goes like that. So check it, looks good. Flipping over there, flipping over there. And I am gonna stick a pin in this because I know which side I am starting my sewing on. Okay. Open it up. I haven't cut my threads in between. You don't need to do that and it keeps your blocks in place, keeps your pinwheel in place. Just do one more double check, and I'm gonna finger press my pinwheel to one side, and then I'm gonna finger press my other seam to the other side, so my seams nest perfectly, just like that. If you want to, you can just pop a pin in right there and take it to the machine and pull. If it's not quite feeling just right, just give it a little stretch. It'll work out just fine. And it doesn't say um, in the instructions to do this, but it should measure four and a half inches. I'm just gonna give it a quick check and it's right on the money. Oh, I just want to trim this little edge right here. So that's ready to go. Let me just give it a quick press. Okay, our pinwheel is finished. 
Now we're ready to assemble our block. I'm gonna get a bigger design board because we have so many pieces. So we've got that. We've got kind of like our half square. Well, the, these are our flying geese that looks like arrows. Our units with the flying geese in them. And on two sides, let's grab our G. We need to sew those pieces on those sides. Okay, so we're laying this out. Now for our tulip blocks, super important to get these going the right direction. I'm gonna follow along carefully. So we have this. This is how we lay it out. We have this cornerstone block and we're creating our tulip and it looks like, nope, that was right, this one. Let's see, nope, that's not right. I think that is right. Nope, that is not. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna get this right, folks. Here we go. There is our tulip shape, and we need our little, oh, here they are. This is our little pieces, they're L's. And that is what that unit looks like. And I've actually got a couple finished, so I want you to see how that unit looks. So we're gonna make four of those unit just by laying out everything in the right direction. Okay, so we have it all laid out. Double check, triple check, make sure it's all correct. So like I mentioned, I've already sewn these two units. They are our tulips and they're opposite. So these two are finished. So I'm gonna sew these two right now. And how you do that is I sew this together like that flip and press, sew that together. Down here, flip and press. And then I put those two together to make this block. I'm gonna finish those two and come back and show you how to assemble the rest of the block. All right, I finished my other two uh, tulip blocks. I did wanna talk just quickly about pressing. It's okay that this wasn't pressed to the dark side. It wanted to fall naturally this way. And our, um, our color, our whites are so strong that you don't see the color the opposite side. So I did press it that way because it just fell better going that direction. So I finished these two blocks, but you can press however you want. You're the boss of your quilt. No one's gonna look on the underside of your quilt block and see how you pressed your blocks. So now that those are pressed, um, this strip or this row can be sewn together and so can this row be sewn together. But we still have to assemble this, eh, we're gonna call it an arrow, these two pieces flanking the side of it. So I'm gonna take this to the machine and sew both sides to this block and come back and then our rows will be ready to sew together. Okay, I'm gonna clip my threads real fast, give it a good press. Open them up. And I, they just want to fall that way, so I'm gonna leave them just like they are. Let it fall open like that. Again, you can press however you would like. I'm just going to press how it naturally wants to fall open. Okay, so now we're ready to assemble our quilt block. 
I'm gonna sew this center section first. Now it's super important to line up this point right here to the center of your pinwheel. And it looks, I have a good fourth inch seam, I have a good fourth inch here, which allows for the seam allowance, so I'm not gonna cut off my point. But I'm gonna flip it over this direction like this. I'm gonna sew it on the machine like this. I'm gonna line that up perfectly. Just gonna press that up. I'm gonna put a pin here. And when I'm sewing this, I wanna be able to sew on this side so I make sure I don't cut into my point. So sew it this direction, and then you're gonna flip it over. Again, line that up perfectly. I just kinda line it like that. Put a pin in it so it doesn't shift. Put a pin up top. And again, I'm gonna sew on this side right here so I don't cut into my point so I can see my point when I'm sewing. So let me pin, so it's opposite sides, but we are gonna be ready to go. You can add another pin there, I'm just not going to this time. Okay, take it to your pressing station. Now press it open. Let's see how I want to press it open. I think I want to press it this direction. There we go. Now again, it's so important through this whole quilt block that you have an accurate fourth inch seam allowance. Okay, take a look. Now our points line up perfectly. That's just what we want to see. And if they don't, if you don't care, that's all right, let's move on. But I'm, I'm really happy how this lined up with my pinwheel. So let's lay this down here. That's our center section. And we just have to do our two remaining rows. And we're gonna sew this to that side. Just pin it along there. And then we, this is gonna, go here, we can pin it along here. You can do it all at once or one at a time, whatever you'd like to do. And I'm gonna sew these two rows and bring them back and show you the last two seams we need to create. Okay, I finished sewing and pressing these blocks. Let's sew our last two seams. Just gonna flip it this direction. You can line them up. Nest your seams, and I will be back here with the finished block with you. Okay, I've sewn my last two rows. I've pressed. It's time to square up our block. That's the last thing we need to do. I'm going to bring in the rotating mat, and let's take a look. I, I don't think I mentioned this before, but when you're sewing on the last two rows, make sure your arrows line up with your center pinwheel, just like that. I pin that in place so that would line up just how I wanted it to. And now let's take a look at our quilt block. Line up all the lines with your center markings and look at that. My pinwheel lines up. Everything lines up and I'm not seeing anything outside. So I don't think I need to trim up at all. I think I have a couple loose threads over here that I'm just trimming off. But the block's good to go. And congratulations if you've been sewing along and following along with us finishing this tulip block. This is quite an accomplishment. I can't wait to see what Jill Finley does with her own block that she designs. So thanks for joining us today. Join us next time for block number five.